So really quickly, before I start the presentation, just by a show of hands, uh, who used Google Maps today? <laughs> wow, OK. Uh, hands down, who used Apple Maps today? OK. That wasn't a promotion for Google Maps. Just um, did anybody use a city-specific app today, like 9292 or anything like that? A couple, a few people. OK, great. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, so just by a quick introduction, if I can get the... It's not turned on. I'm sorry. This is, oh, this one. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, just... That's oh, right. Oh, cool. Perfect. Just by a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Erin Munzert. I'm a user experience researcher at Google. I work on Google Maps. I've been there for about two and a half years now. Um, and our mission within Google Maps is really all about helping people to explore and navigate their world wherever they are. Um, before coming to Google, I was at a company called Frog, which I'm sure several of you are familiar with, uh, for about six years. There I was actually a hybrid interaction designer and design researcher. So I try to bring some of my design chops into the research that we're actually doing at Google. Today, what I really want to talk about is five principles for modeling impactful, immersive research programs within an eng-driven and tech-focused organization. And something that I think is really important to note here, um, it's actually two things. One, I don't want to focus too much on um, some of the immersive research methodologies that we use. This isn't really about that. It's more about how we actually sold uh, an immersive research program within Google, and then the impact that we have and how we can actually showcase the impact through this immersive program. Uh, the second thing to note is we're actually going to be using a case study called the Urban Jungle Project, which just took place uh, last year. It actually. <laughs> excuse me, it actually also took place in Amsterdam, uh, to highlight some of these key principles. So a little bit of background about the Urban Jungle Project. Um, it was pretty massive. It took place over two weeks, uh, four cities in parallel. And what we did, we decided to take UX team members into the city for the first week to do a little bit of preparation, to do some usability testing, get our product knowledge kind of up to speed, and of course, we ourselves immersed within the environment. The second week was all about bringing cross-functional team members, I'm trying not to use the word stakeholder from Katie's talk this morning, um, into the field where we did a bunch of different stuff. We were doing interviews and co-design, we were doing immersion, and we lastly did this thing called opportunity analysis, which I'll get to a little bit later. So this is just some background about the, the timeline. The goal of the Urban Jungle project itself was both to understand how users are thinking about and utilizing our Google Maps product as it is today uh, all around the globe and try to you know, incre incrementally understand how to make that better. And then also to look at new features and functionality and opportunities that can be positioned on our roadmap one to two years out and that is really sort of trying to understand how people navigate their dense urban environments. So let's just go ahead and jump right in with the principles. Um, the first principle I want to talk about is the idea of data-driven design decision-making. <sighs> lots of words, lots of Ds. <laughs> and what I really want to think, you to think about here is a lot of times with field work, what tends to happen is that we actually jump right in. We want to do a little bit of research ahead of time to understand um, maybe how things are going and, and do some market analysis and desk research, but we're really, really focused on trying to understand the qualitative needs of our users, to trying to really think about unmet needs and how we can meet those through these longer term sort of strategic decisions. But what we think about a lot at Google, and what really sells a program at Google, is this idea of groundwork, which fundamentally means you have to have a data-backed quantitative backing and a set of hypotheses that you are trying to prove or disprove 
by going into the field and doing your field work. So the example here that I think we need to use is thinking about how to look at logs analysis, uh, which at Google is kind of about uh, understanding our data and our product broken down by features, who uses it, what that actually means, usage over time, et cetera. Coming up with some ideas around maybe why people aren't using those feature or some features, and then going taking those hypotheses and moving them into questions that you're there to figure out within the field or prove or disprove, and also answer the whys behind the quantitative data. Another way that we were thinking about actually selling the program internally was we said a lot of times what ends up happening is you know we come out as researchers with this idea of longer term strategic solutions, great, new opportunities, functionality, it's gonna be wonderful for our product, but we're not really thinking of these immediate impact, the immediate impact that we have with near term design solutions. So for example, feature fixes. Um, does everybody in the audience kinda know what a bug is? You're, Good. <laughs> Bug fixes, right? Like they happen all the time. You notice them. You may report it, you may not. Um, our job was to actually take those and, and see how many bugs we can actually find in the field and then come back and fix them immediately. And that really gets to some of the near term uh, solutions we're talking about. And that helped us to kind of get over the hump with this idea of selling the immersive research by saying, we're not just going to do the long term, we're also looking at doing the near term. I think it's really important to note that as a consultant, I was really focused on qualitative findings to move forward the idea of the strategic and long-term vision for a product. What happened when I got to Google is that I learned that having groundwork and having the quantitative data to back your qualitative insights and showcasing that you can have near-term concrete product impact coming directly out of field is as important, if not more important, to our research. A quick example of some groundwork that we did for the Urban Jungle Project. We wanted to look at um, how people utilize and use different features within the MAPS product in the four different cities that we were going to. So we got into our logs and kind of understood how often people were using particular things, how many people were utilizing particular uh, uh, features and functionality. And then on top of that, we ran large-scale surveys within the four different cities to really be able to look through at feature awareness. What this helped us do was we were able to then say, let's understand why we have such a, you know, a low number of individuals who are using ride sharing, and let's try to think about new opportunities that we can progress and push that forward within our product, and let's also try to understand how to make the features that people are using every single day even better, because we know that there's a prevalence there. The second or, uh, principle that I want to talk about is this idea of influencer participation. We all want influencers, or people who have reach within our organization, to participate in our research activities, our service design activities, anything that's going to get the information that we're coming out with kind of pushed forward. What we don't think about a lot is what actually makes a good influencer. And so that's something that my research team talked a lot about before we invited people to come into the field with us. We found this framework by a woman named Shoba Panapa that's really focused on fundamentally five different ways you can actually think about influence. First, the idea of reach, of course, seniority within an organization. But you need to have relevance to the project that you actually want to be communicating that you're going to do. You want to make sure that people who are coming into the field with you are going to be able to take something out of it. Resonance is really about each individual influencer having a voice and knowing that their voice is heard within their own product teams. Recognition is thinking about, is this person a leader that their both manager and their peers actually believes can lead? And I think one of the most important ones that we often forget about when talking about influencers 
are, is can they actually be reliable? Can they be reliable to come into the field, be open-minded, take the learnings away from the field, and actually take them back to their product teams to help push those recommendations forward and change their products because of the recommendations? So with this, this framework in mind, for the Urban Jungle Project, we worked with senior and VP level stakeholders to identify 65 different MAPS team members, which we asked to come into the field with us. Out of those team members, 40 cross-functional stakeholders joined us in the field. And when I say cross-functional, I mean engineers, product managers, uh, business strategists, and our brand and marketing team alongside of UX. And out of those 40 individuals, it covered nine different cross-product, this is within MAPS, cross-product feature teams. So we were really covering this broad range of people who were working within product silos um, to come out into the field. What ended up happening is the research itself had to be a lot broader, right? You can't go super deep on each individual feature. It's hard. But what we found was because people actually got to work in new teams with individuals that they'd never really spoken to before, we found that you had these really big cross-product recommendations that broke individuals out of their feature silos and got everybody, regardless of the role or the title, to really think about what they want the future of MAPS to be. This is a pretty straightforward one. I think we talked a little bit about it before. But time is, is precious. Time is important. And when you're asking your cross-functional stakeholders or team members to come into the field, you have to be very, very thoughtful about that period of time. You saw from the beginning that we, you know, we just asked for a week of somebody's time. But that's actually not true. And we wanted to set expectations before anybody actually got there. What we did is we had each individual person who was interested in coming into the field with us understand there was going to be pre-work, right? We set, we did all of this groundwork. We came up with so many numbers and we learned so much from that that we needed everybody to absorb that before they got into the field. It's also incredibly important for us to recognize that during time in the field, it's from morning to evening. You're doing research and analysis. You're doing interviews. You're tired. And fundamentally, you're actually hanging out with your team members and going out to dinner, hopefully having a couple of drinks and a nice time. Um, so there's also this really important thing. Oh, I'm running out of time. I'll be really quick. <laughs> okay. um, about the after, the, the component of the after work, which is all about uh, people coming back and understanding that they have to socialize the recommendations and the opportunities from the field with their teams and with the broader org. A huge thing for us is this idea of the importance of feedback loops. I cannot ex stress this more about how important it is at Google. We do really quick, short surveys with our team members from the very beginning of the program until after the program is over. And we're trying to find out things like, what are the key questions that you're trying to answer in the field? What are your goals and what you're trying to get out of coming to do research with us? Do you have any food aversions or allergies? <laughs> what do you want to do for entertainment at night? Um, and then lastly, the thing I think we were talking a lot about um, earlier today, this idea of offboarding. Did you actually take away what you wanted from the research did it impact your team, and was it worth your time and effort? That is so important to us as researchers to understand if people are really getting value that we want them to get out of what we do. Fourth principle, collaborative recommendations. This one's pretty straightforward as well, so I'll go through it quickly. Analysis in field can solve so much about the time moments afterwards. As a researcher, it's really hard for me to let go of the fact that I don't get to really, really get deep and dirty with my data anymore. Analysis doesn't happen over, we, we used to say one week of field work meant two weeks of analysis time, right? At Google, 
doesn't really happen. What does happen is analysis right after interviews at the end of the day or immersion at the end of the day. One full day at the end of the research program dedicated in field to analysis and collaboratively everyone getting to the point where they feel like they can make recommendations together. And that's really, really huge. For Urban Jungle, we even took it a step further. When we came up with the recommendations and we gave presentations, we not once, as researchers, touched a presentation. Everything was given by non-UXers to the broader org, which was great. We sold the program as researchers, and then a product manager or an engineer goes to that same team that we were able to sell the research to and says, here are the learnings from the project. Here's what we came up with. It was amazing how impactful that actually was for the recommendations and for the learnings to not come specifically from research. The last principle I want to talk about a little bit about is this idea of meaningful impact. So we do all the stuff, right? We have some really great learnings that are cross-cutting globally. We've gone to four different cities. And what we're really focused on, that we talked about in the beginning, was this idea of the concrete near-term impact and the strategic longer-term impact. Concrete near-term impact is important because in order to get your product team members into the field, these are engineers and product managers. You have to show them that this, this research will affect their product immediately. The impactful recommendations from the strategic and long term is much more about VP level and senior planning, thinking about the roadmap one to two years out. What we did not realize until we got back from Urban Jungle is the importance of this idea of the enduring impact that a program like this has. We were so focused on wanting to really prove out that we could have new opportunities for products and we could make our current product better by better understanding user needs. We didn't think about the fact that by bringing individuals who don't usually do research into the field, it fundamentally changed the way that our organization thinks about empathy and it's really changed the culture of the organization. So just to reiterate, when you're thinking about concrete impact, it really is about the feature. When you're thinking about the strategic impact, it's all about the product. It's really pushing and progressing the product forward, making sure you're innovating. And when you're thinking about impact within your team, you have to be thinking and prioritizing the idea of organizational enduring impact. It is as important as product impact. I'm just gonna leave you with a couple of examples. Uh, a, an example of concrete impact that came out of the Urban Jungle program was uh, we were in the field in India and Indonesia, and we had a ride-sharing tab in Google Maps. You can order an Uber or a Lyft from, from the ride-sharing tab. And what we didn't realize is that those were very specific to four-wheel vehicles. And when we came into the field, we realized that in places like Indonesia, two-wheel vehicles dominate the ride-sharing um, landscape. And so all we needed to do was make the recommendation to bring two-wheel vehicles into the ride-sharing landscape. And so I want to leave you with this. The idea of enduring and meaningful impact really resonates so strongly to me with uh, Stefan, who is an engineering director, who is really not super on board with going to Urban Jungle in the first place, but we talked him into it. And he said, I and 39 others experienced our users' problems firsthand and we came back to our teams with stories to help them understand our users better. I learned that we have to rely heavily on user research, data, and stories about the people we should be designing for. This is coming from an engineer. I just want to, <laughs> let's pause on that for a second. It was huge for us. And, and again, we are fundamentally sort of changing the way that user experience is thought about within the culture of maps, and next year, we are very lucky because we are doing two urban jungle programs. So these are the five principles I'll leave you with. Hopefully you've learned something. And thank you so much for having me.